Hey there everybody, it's Ira and I'm back with more Vintage Story. Yes, you folks were very loud and clear uh, in the comments for that first video. It was uh, very well received and people definitely want to see more, so let's do it. Let's have some more. Um, I have obviously been busy. I've made a lot of progress. I didn't want to show every step of kind of the early game stuff because eh, I've done it all before a couple of times on video and it's I don't think it's that interesting. It's very just kind of grindy and repetitive. Uh, I did do a bit of exploration and we're going to get to that in a bit. Uh, but first of all, this is this is that same ruin that I stumbled upon on the uh, there we go on the first uh, first video right at the start, and I have finally dug pretty much all of it out. Got a little bit still in the corner here that I need to do. If come outside, we take a look. Uh, by the way, if you missed my note uh, on the last video, the lighting did reset. The lighting did reset when I uh, unload closed closed and then reloaded the game. So um, few to that. But yeah, this is a really beautiful ruin. I've dug it all out here, and what I would like to do is basically restore it. I'd like to kind of try to figure out what this would have looked like before it got half buried. And look how look how buried it is over here. This will all have to be flattened out uh, and crumbled and all of that. Uh, so I think we can kind of deduce some things from the way it is. I'll dig out the floor, and I've got a lot of these skull blocks. These, these skull blocks, there's tons of them in here. It's a mess in here, I'm sorry. Please excuse me. I knew I was having company coming over and I still didn't tidy. Where did I put the... There's a lot of these uh, skull, skull cobble skulls. Chalk ones especially. We've got a few sandstone. Uh, I think I had a few slate, maybe in this box. Andesite, okay, there we go. Uh, and I think I want to use those for the floor in here. I think that would look kind of cool. I'd make a nice pattern with them. Um, this, at this end, it looks like there was basically, this was all completely buried, by the way. It took me ages to dig this out. A lot of it was buried not only under dirt, but under, uh, stone. I had to mine out a lot of slate to get in here. It looks like there's some kind of throne here. Like, this is maybe a, a hall, and the, the chief would look out, or the mayor, or whatever the leader was. We've got, we've got some missing blocks here and there, uh, but I think we can deduce kind of what happens, uh, kind of what goes in each place. By the way, there's a beehive in here, and I did actually make some skeps. I've got them, I've moved them out here now so that I could dig out the, uh, the ruin. Whoop. I love the jump. By the way, I think the jump has improved or has changed. You now jump, if you're holding forward, you really jump forward. You get like a two block jump. I like that. And you can also jump up from further away, which I like. Uh, so we've got a couple of skeps here, both with large populations. So those could be harvested for honey, uh, which we will need to make jam eventually. Oh yes. So, you know, looking at this, basically it seems to me that um, most of the stone is probably still here, right? Like, the, the areas that are missing are kind of consistent holes. So either there was nothing there, or uh, it was filled with something that could be destroyed or rot. So either with glass or with wood is my, my guess. So I'm going to try to work out some good building materials, but I'm not going to start restoring this place yet because um, I've got other stuff to do. Now, I have done quite a bit of mining. Obviously, I've got my first uh, tin bronze tools. Now, I'm going to I'm going to make a little confession here. Um, I, I cheesed it a little bit with the tin. I also cheesed it a bit with the the metal. I have fiddled a little bit more with the, the config files than I originally did. I've made some more tweaks and changes. Um, I think I don't think I've done any videos since they made this change. So if you're if you're confused about what we're looking at here between the rich chunk of native copper and the nugget of native copper, uh, when you break copper stones that you find out in the world, let's go grab let's go grab some. I have some up here that I have not broken yet. Let's jog up. <laughs> there we go. And yes, up here I marked them. Ooh, these berries are ripe. I'm gonna grab these. I'm gonna do a bit of cooking as well. Um. So yeah, here we've got some native copper bits in slate. Now if you break one of these, what you get is just these little nuggets. That one only had two. That one only had one, I guess. So you kind of get between like one and one and three, maybe one and four nuggets per stone. Alright, so you find... This one actually has quite a few. Usually there's not that many in one area. So I got ten copper nuggets from that. Now each of these nuggets... Oh, there's another one right here. There's another one right here. This is actually quite a good find if I had found it right at the start, but I didn't. I wandered all over the place looking for copper. Uh, so I've got 12 copper nuggets, and each of these is 5 units of copper. 20 of these smelt into 1 copper ingot, which means you need 20 copper nuggets to make your first pick. But my friends, there's more to it than that. 
because uh, now when you go mining, if you find copper ore and you go mining, you don't get the nuggets directly. You get these, oh, I left them in here. I'll go grab them, excuse me, excuse me. Jog over here, stub, stub on my toes on things. Uh, you get these chunks and they have, there's, they're graded. So they can either be uh, poor, medium, rich, or bountiful. So this is rich, which is quite good. Uh, now you see this says 100 units of copper. Now I have changed that. Uh, it's not 100 units by default. Basically, usually when you break one of these chunks in the vanilla un unmodified game, you only get a few nuggets. So you have to really mine a lot. And I found that uh, if I make a copper pick and go mining for copper, I get like enough for maybe a couple of copper tools, like, and then I have to make another pick. They, they break so quickly, so I decided, because I'm not here, now if you enjoy the mining, my friends, if you enjoy uh, finding the ore and mining it out, and you enjoy that grindy bit, then by all means, you keep playing it the way it was made in vanilla. But I don't enjoy that part, and it's also very hard on my wrist, so I have changed the configuration files. Now, to change how much you actually get from these, it's a bit tricky because there is a config file that's uh, under resources. This is ore-graded, I think. And you can change the numbers in there, but that only changes the tooltip here. If you want to change how many you actually get, you have to go into the recipes, and you have to find uh, the ore files in there, and you have to change how many nuggets you get from each one. So I finally figured that out, and now I've got enough. Uh, I also cheesed it a bit with the tin. Tin is ridiculously rare. Um, either that or I'm ridiculously unlucky, because I spent a couple of hours exploring with my, uh, where is it, where is it, here we go, with my prospecting pick, which is just about dead now, trying to find tin, and I couldn't find any anywhere. I actually found some place that has iron ore, hematite ore, a um, couple thousand blocks that way, but I didn't find any tin. Uh, I finally found a spot, actually not too far from here, it's in that direction, where it had like 0.2% which was labeled as rich, because that's how, that's how rare it is um, to get tin. And I started, I, I honestly started doing it legit, and I started caving, and I started digging and mining, and I went at that for about an hour, and then I went, you know what? I don't enjoy this. This isn't fun for me. Um, I'm not having a good time. My wrist is already starting to get sore. I'm starting to get frustrated. And if I do this legitimately, it's probably going to take me eight hours of searching. So what I did is I cheated a bit. I jumped into creative mode, folks. Uh, and I just flew around the caves until I found the tin ore. It still took me another hour in creative mode um, just to find the ore. And then I mined it legitimately, and I got back out legitimately. Um, and of course, I have increased the number of nuggets you get from each, so I shouldn't have to go mining for tin again. I really just don't enjoy that part of it. That's just not for me. So now that I have the bronze, I, that means I can go and I can mine the iron that I found in that direction. I found something else in that direction too, my friends. I found another area of ruins, which is actually bigger than this area, and has much bigger ruins, and is a nicer... Just seems like a really nice area to live in. So I think I might actually make my base over there, to the east. It's quite a ways to the east. Let's see, if I open up the map, I think I did throw a waypoint down. Look at how much nicer this looks now. Oh my goodness, I dug it all out. Um, so actually, I can use the scroll wheel to scroll, scroll out, and it's here, village site. Uh, that's where I want to go, and I think I want to move my base over there. Uh, the iron that I found is right around here somewhere. Here we go, hematite traces, and then I found a much, much bigger, so somewhere in here there's going to be like a massive deposit of iron. And I think iron has been made extremely rare in this version, so that's a big deal. So I want to go and take my, my bronze, uh, tools, and I want to go and dig up iron and make iron tools. And then once I've got all the iron equipment, then I can kind of relax a bit and focus more on building and stuff like that. So that's kind of the plan now, is I basically want to get some stuff together. I want to cook. This food is spoiling, by the way. There is, food does spoil now. Uh, as it spoils, it basically just reduces the nutritional content of it. Uh, the more it spoils, so it doesn't give you the same saturation as it otherwise would. Um, let's go ahead and make some porridge. I don't, I don't really have, I haven't been farming yet, so I don't really have vegetables. I could put some protein. I have some soybeans. I only got four. I got four soybeans. What have I got for grain? I got spelt. I've got rice here. Um, by the way, sometimes it doesn't stack, and I was confused about that, and then I realized it's because there's different uh, freshness ratings on this. This is fresh for 48 days. This is fresh for 50.2 days. If I stack these together, I think they take the, um, the lower number, so I would lose time on that. Uh, 
Berries do not stay fresh for very long, so it's good to use those up as quickly as possible. Let's, um, let's throw this back in there. Uh, so, porridge requires... So we'll use the old porridge first. One. You can only make six at a time. As far as I know. So we'll do that. Five. Twenty. Okay. Oh. Oh, maybe it averages out the freshness rating. Okay, that's not so bad. So we'll do that. I'll probably just eat these berries because they won't last very long. Um, and do I have a stack of six of any vegetable or protein item? I don't think I do. I don't. I found a whole bunch of seeds, by the way, while I was exploring. I found some cabbage seeds, which is exciting. Uh, the only food that I have growing right now is this one little thing of onions. And this is, I actually enjoy this, my friends. Remember I told you the hairs are a pain? The hairs are a pain. They will come and eat your crops. However, you can make a hair trap like this. And we've got a couple of hairs in here. We've got three hairs. Oh, look at that. We got another one. It's the last time I check. Um, I could pick these onions and then replant them. In fact, why don't I, why don't I do that? There. There we go. And that will still attract the hairs. They're going to run away from me. So all I have to do... Actually, I can even... Ugh, I can use my sword. And... There we go. Now I just need a knife. I do prefer to do the vegetarian route for the most part, but these hares are a pest. They are bountiful, and I need to get rid of them somehow. So uh, this is kind of part of my farming plan. I'm going to make a whole bunch of these hair traps. Oop, there's another onion here. All right, so uh, shift and hold right, click, and they don't give you much, but they do give you, as you will see, some red meat, which is uh, quite good nutrition value. Just collect these up. That. Now, unfortunately, they don't give you leather or anything like that. I really could use some leather. As you can see in the bottom right, my storage is still very primitive. I managed to get enough flax together to make a couple of linen sacks, but otherwise I'm still using baskets. I don't have a lot of inventory space. Uh, I will have to go hunting at some point, I guess. So, all right, we're going to put spelt grain, the berries... There has to be uh, two stacks of the grain. And I don't have six of any particular vegetable, so maybe I'll just go with the berries for now. I've got plenty of these. Okay, uh, I will have to cook up this meat pretty quickly. The vegetables stay fresh for a long time, so I can stick those in there. The berries rot fast, the meat rots fast. Uh, let's grab... I did also increase the burn time for all of the fuels, so uh, firewood and coal and everything will burn twice as long as the default, because, again, it's just it just reduces a bit of the grind for me. Um, so for the red meat, we can have... Red meat... Oh, I think I have to have two pieces of meat to make stew, don't I? think I do. Will it explain it to me? Ingredient for... Um, will you? Crafting mechanic cooking? No, it's not, it's not in here. Okay, you have to use the wiki. So, if I could get one more red meat... I'm not even, I'm not even gonna need all this firewood. Let's stick that back down. Well, if I could attract another hare... They tend- the hares respawn, which is why I'm using the hares rather than hunting down the other animals. I'm not sure if the other animals actually respawn, or if you have to breed them now. Hmm. Well, I can make one serving of stew, I suppose. When you- when you cook this stuff into stews and porridges and stuff, it lasts longer. So that's a, a really good reason to do that. And... Alright, well I can do that. I can just roast one of them, I suppose. Oh, we got- you're only fresh for five more days. We can do that. Yeah, why don't we why don't we do this? Get another pot. Some more firewood. As soon as this one's done. I like to lay it out like this, and then you can quickly uh quickly grab it. Now this fire also stays hot. It doesn't cool instantly. So I think this will work. Yes, that'll work. That'll surely be enough. Uh, now we've got this nice fresh pot of porridge, and that's going to be good for... It doesn't say how long it's going to be good for. Oh, but as long as it stays hot, it doesn't uh, spoil, actually. That's why. So it's not going to tell me how much longer it has. So once that's done, I'll just throw this last bit of meat on the fire to cook up. I've got my first bits of rot, by the way, and... Let's be in the, in the thing. 
It's not, okay, not everything is in this handbook. You can apparently combine, I don't remember how many you need, but if you get enough rot, you can combine them into compost, which is basically like high fertility soil, which is cool. Oh, I did find some high fertility soil, by the way, friends. Look at this. It's called Terra Preta now. It's got fertility of 100. It is gorgeous. And it, it seems to be very rare. There we go. Now I can probably cook this without putting any more fuel in the fire. Cooks at 150, and this is not going to get down to 150 before that's done. Look at all this delicious food we have now. Mmm. Spectacular. So what I can do when I go traveling is I can just take the pots and a bowl with me. Yep, that's working. That's working beautifully. Spectacular. Throw this back down. Uh, so basically, I need to prepare right now. I need to prepare... Delicious. How, how long will this last now? One and a half days, so not too long. I should eat that first. These will last for a few days at least, I think, before they'll go bad. Once they cool down, we'll, we'll find out. This is, this is spoiling. Maybe I can just eat this now before it loses any more nutrition. Uh, so I need to get my stuff together. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm, I'm going to bring my food. Um, I'm going to bring some storage, like some chests and stuff, and some tools. Uh, basically, I'm going to take the first few items that I will need to set up in the new area. Uh, I'm not going to try to, to, to replace these with backpacks just yet. I'm going to work on that later. Uh, so I'm just going to go and, and get over there, set up a sort of starter kind of base. I'll make some chests and stuff, and I'll, I'll, I'll set up a little starter area, and then uh, I'll check back in with you folks. I'll show you the other ruin that I found, and then we'll go mining and see if we can get our first iron, because that will be a huge step, because iron lasts for quite a while, and uh, then I won't have to worry so much about tools for a while. And then we can decide what to do next. So, my friends, I am off. I have started my journey. I have left my, my little home, which actually I don't even think we can see anymore. It's back that way. The moon is setting. The sun is rising. And I am on my way. I have decided to bring uh, basically a full set of tools. A couple of types of seeds. I can make a stone hoe when I get there, so I haven't brought a hoe. <gasps> I forgot something. Oh, my goodness. The reason I have so little storage is because I saved a storage slot so that I could bring some bees with me. And then I completely forgot to grab the bees. Good thing I stopped to make this little clip before I carried on. Uh, but you can see I've got the full set of tools. I've got some berries, which I'll probably eat on the way. Uh, I might even eat those right now. Can eat and swim at the same time. Yeah, I'm very talented. I am. Thank you for noticing. Um, and I brought those two pots of food and a bowl. There's my house. There it is. And some planks to turn into chests, and a couple of picks, because uh, the main thing I want to do when I get to where we're going is I want to mine some copper. So, I want to make sure I have enough picks with me. I have this copper pick on my hotbar, which is a little bit low. I've got another one in my inventory, and I've got the uh, tin bronze one that I made so that I can use that to mine the iron, and I will save that probably until I get to the iron. Let's jog on over here. Rah! Rah! <laughs> there we are. Alright, if you don't know how to pick up these skeps, by the way, if you break them, you can get the honey and the wax if, they're, uh, if they've got a large population, if they're ready to harvest. Actually, this one is not ready to harvest. I think it'll say if it's ready to harvest, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, in any case, uh, if you break it, then you, you lose it, basically. What you need to do is you have to hold control and then use the mouse wheel, and you'll go through your containers there, and you need an, uh, uh, an empty one. And then you shift, right-click to pick up the skep. So I am now carrying bees in my pocket. Just got bees in my pocket, like you do, right? It's always good to have a set of bees in your pocket. Oh, goodness. I need to get swimming again. Ugh. Uh, but the reason I stopped right over here... Oh, look at that sunrise. Let's just... Can we just... What? There we go. <laughs> Let's just hide the interface for a bit while I swim back over. I find, I think swimming is a bit faster than walking over the ground, especially since it's in a straight line in this case. But look at those god rays. Look at that sun. This might be, this might be my thumbnail for this episode. I'm not sure. We'll see. Well, you, you, you folks already know. You already know what my, you're in the future. You're in my future. You already know what the thumbnail is. How strange is that, right? It's, it's crazy. Um, so I've got my bees. I've got my tools. I got some food. I got my picks. And uh, I've got a bunch of torches. And so I'm about to head out, but before I fully head out on my way, 
uh, which I'm not gonna record because you folks don't need to see me wandering. I mean, maybe you want to see me wandering, and we can do we can do uh, an episode of that at some point. But we don't have that much time left in this episode, and I want to at least get where I'm going before the end of the episode. Uh, but there's something over here which I don't think I have featured in a, in a YouTube episode yet because I think they were added in 1.9, and I don't think I did any actual recording with 1.9. You can see it just over here behind the trees. If you've got a good eye, you can spot it. Um, and that's the traders, the NPC traders. Let's get that interface back up. The NPC traders are now here. And uh, there we go. Uh, I brought my, my two rusty gears. I only got two. I also got a bed to sleep in and some ladders. Yeah, uh, this is for working that, uh, that, that good, good iron when we get it. Um, but the gears are now currency. Now the, the traders are, it's tough. It's, it's not easy to trade for stuff. Usually they want really rare things, and they only have a limited inventory, and then you have to wait. Can we just... Hey. Hey. Do I need to have an empty hand? Alright, hold on. Delicious berries. Okay. Hello! So this is Miguel the Building Materials Trader. Uh, and Miguel sells different types of planks, different types of stone, some bricks, and will buy these items here. Now, some of the items they buy are only obtainable in ruins, um, and some of them are tools and other items, usually very high level and difficult to make ones. So it is tough to get stuff that they'll buy. Occasionally they'll buy something simple like ladders or something, but um, that's it. And then they have a limited number of gears. There's a limited number of these that they'll buy. See, it says price two gears, demand two. It means he'll only buy two of those hammers, and then that's it. Can't sell any more hammers until the restock day, uh, which is six days from now. By the way, Miguel's also got a beehive in here. I got a beehive in my house. Miguel's got a beehive in uh, his house. It's, it's, there's bees everywhere. It's B city. It's B land. So I'm gonna run uh, east and a little bit north, and I'll check in with you folks when I'm near my goal. And there it is, my friends. We have been walking for the better part of a day. I do like these longer days, though. Let me tell you. Uh, and we have made it here. If you look up in the coordinates in the top right, it's more than two thousand blocks from the spawn area, which is where I uh, have set up so far. And this whole area is just begging to be settled. And in fact, it seems it was at one point settled because we have got a whole bunch of ruins over here. I'm going to jog over because it's actually still quite a ways over there. Uh, but we've got this big, big flat area. Oh, look, the small onions right there. Good to know. Big, big flat area over here. And these big structures are actually ruins. I wasn't sure when I first saw them in the distance and I came over here to investigate. And I was impressed because I have never seen these real big ones before. Um, I looked through them briefly when I came here last time, and I may have broken a couple of the cracked urns, which have loot in them, uh, but not too many, and, oh, oh, there's a flint knife on the ground. I must have dropped this in order to pick up something else, and it's still here. I guess stuff doesn't despawn when you walk away from it. Oh, there's meteor meteoric iron right here as well. I did not notice that before. Um, okay. We'll have to check out that cave after, because maybe that means there's a meteorite under the ground, and there's a cave opening right there. Um, over here we've got this huge one right here, which looks like it was at one point... Maybe even something like a highway? Or a raised walkway of some sort? Or maybe, a, like, a wall around the castle? It does look like... An, like a door here. This looks like an entrance to something, don't you think? Look at that, and if we go up here... See, we've got this walkway. What's left of one? This is very cool. If we come down, there's another ru couple ruins over here. They're just dotted all around this huge plain. And it's just, it's just such a nice area. Get this one here, we got one there, we got one there, we got two of them over there. There's just tons. There's tons of ruins around here. I have not fully investigated yet, but this definitely seems like an area where I want to set up shop. There is also iron, and I didn't think to bring my prospecting pick with me, which is probably just as well, because it's almost dead anyway. I'll have to make a new one. Um, but there is iron somewhere in this area. I, I did check while I was here before, and I think I remember getting good readings of iron here. So if we can find a good cave system and go down and go caving, and yeah, this basically just looks like a good place to live. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to go back and forth between here and spawn quite a few times while we get set up, because I haven't brought everything with me. I've just brought kind of some bare essentials with me. Let's see, we got 4.8 days, 5 days left on this food, so that this this food will keep me going until I need to go back, I think. And but unfortunately I think we're just about out of time. We've got a we've got a vessel right there. What is this? Cracked vessel food. 
Cool. Some food if I need it. Um, yeah, I think we're just about out of time, my friends. I think we are just about out of time. So I'm going to end it here. And I'm going to set up shop a little bit. If you folks really want to see me going caving and stuff, let me know. I'm not sure if I'm going to record that because I usually it's usually very boring and I'm usually very scared and I do it very slowly and carefully and it's not exciting. I don't like going in there and finding the danger and fighting the monsters. <laughs> you folks know me, right? You've met me. You've seen these videos before. Uh, so I may just go and do that on my own and get some iron. And then once I have some tools, I'll make like some really good iron tools and we'll use them to start digging up the ruins around here and see what we can find. It's very exciting. Um, but that's all for today. Thank you all so, so very much for watching. Thank you for the very good response to the first video in this series. You've definitely inspired me to keep playing and keep recording. And I really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye! Oh, I didn't mean to stab you. Hold on. Hold on. Bye! <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Ira. I hope you like this vintage story video. You know, even real simple videos like this take a lot more time and effort and energy to make than you might think. So if you've got a few extra bucks that you're not using and you can afford it, uh, maybe consider supporting me on patreon.com slash it's me Ira Lee. Uh, it will be a big help if you're able. If you, th if you think my videos are good and you want me to be able to make more of them, uh, that would be a huge help. Uh, if you do, you could even maybe get your name up on this list with the rest of these people. I mean, they do look good there. I think I think your name would look good on the list too, don't you think? I think it would.